Ladies and gentlemen, Julie Sams, Director of Nursing. All right, thank you, Craig. As has often been the case for our Zoom world, sometimes the audio struggles to connect. So thank you everyone for joining us today. I would like to introduce our president, Dr. Kim Perry, who will be leaving us at the end of this month. She is retiring, so this will be her last pinning with us. We want to thank Kim for her leadership in the college and wish her well with her retirement. Thank you, Kim. As Julie said, I'm the president of Bellingham Technical College. Uh, and there's little doubt that our world has changed profoundly in the last nearly 10 months from, uh, of course, the pandemic to worldwide and protests, extreme weather. A lot has happened in the last 10 months. And I know this is not the pinning ceremony that you had envisioned when you first registered for classes, whether it was for your prerequisite classes or when you, when you got admitted into the nursing program. There's, uh, there's no processional walk where you're introduced by name. Uh, there's no cheering family members. Uh, at, so, you know, we'll do our, all the cheering. There's no uh, handshakes or hugs, uh, you know, keeping social distance and all. Uh, and, and as I said, this is just this is not what you expected when you entered the nursing program. Of course, this is not, none of us expected that this is what life would be like. And I am personally very proud of each of you that you decided to continue to pursue, pursue your goal of becoming a registered nurse. We desperately need you and your commitment to, to human health. One of the most fulfilling aspects of working at BTC has been seeing our graduates throughout the healthcare industry. And believe me, I've seen a lot of our graduates in various offices of the healthcare industry uh, throughout Whatcom County, mainly in Bellingham. And whenever um, I am being attended to, I always ask, so where did you get your education? And more often than not, it was at BTC. And then we just start talking about PTC and uh, all of the graduates talk about what a wonderful experience it was being at BTC. And it's been truly gratifying to be in a community at a college that prepares people to work in the community in which we all reside. So we get to see you a lot. So that's really uh, super fulfilling. So at, you know, as we're aware, uh, where, and I was alluding to earlier, life um, doesn't unfold the way we think it should. Uh, there are challenges and uh, unexpected rewards. And I believe that uh, as a BTC graduate, the education that you've gotten, the mentoring you've gotten from the nursing faculty and your clinical supervisors will enable you to face any challenge that, that may come your way, whether it be in the healthcare profession or in your, on your personal life. So I hope that you're all proud of your accomplishments and your tenacity and your perseverance for getting through these challenging uh, uh, 10 months. Well, it's actually been longer. It's a little bit challenge, a little bit more challenging the last 10 months. And uh, of course, up next is the NCLEX. And we just received, or I just received word that the last two cohorts of nursing students in winter and spring passed the NCLEX at a 100% pass rate. So you've got a lot to live up to, but I believe that the education that you've gotten at BTC will serve you well as you move on to take the NCLEX and into your, your first career. So as you embark on this next chapter of life, I have three small tips for you. The first is to experience and interact with the world around you. And for me, that means pausing in my morning routine to watch deer run across our pasture petting our rascally cats, Charlie and Chester, if I can get a hand on them, and soaking in the physical beauty that is our world. And the last 10 months, it's been even more important to press that pause button, take a deep breath, and relax. Second is life is all about people. So take a moment to thank the people who supported you in order for you to be here today family members, friends, perhaps a BTC faculty member or staff member or two or three or four, and other people who have supported you. It is this tapestry of human life 
that is woven into our very fabric that creates a more vibrant and interesting world that's inclusive of all of us. And the third is to maintain perspective. You probably already know this, but life is messy. It can be messy good, which kind of happens unexpectedly, or it can be messy bad. It's only by embracing this messiness that we can truly define and refine ourselves. Those people who do believe that you do make lemonade out of lemons, I prefer lime, so I make key lime pie out of limes. Those are the folks that view challenges as opportunities, they live a joyful and positive life, and they continue to push forward in their hopes and dreams. In a few moments, you will be pronounced a graduate. And so as that's occurring, think about the possibilities that await you. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, thank you so much for choosing this profession focused on human health. We need you, we need your passion, and we look forward to seeing you in the greater Bellingham Whatcom area. Congratulations, soon to be graduates. All right, thank you so much, Kim. So I'm Julie Sams, and I'm a graduate of this nursing program and the Dean of Nursing and Allied Health here at Bellingham Technical College. Welcome. We're all here today to celebrate this group of graduating nurses. Generally, in this type of speech, I, as the administrator, would talk about how much these students have learned and how much they've grown over the past two years. I might then go on to talk about the looming nursing shortage and how much their newly acquired skills are badly needed right here in our community. I could touch on burnout, talk about strategies to avoid it, and end with something inspiring to launch these students out into the magical world of their nursing careers. I'm not gonna do any of those things today. COVID-19 and the resulting global pandemic has undeniably changed the healthcare world that these graduate nurses are about to join. What an interesting time to be a new nurse. I've had a lot of people ask me if being in the middle of a global pandemic dampens the enthusiasm of people training to be nurses or thinking about nursing as a career. I'm sure that there's some of that, but the overwhelming answer is no. This is what we do. We work with sick and vulnerable populations. There's always some risk to us related to that work. A risk that we've learned how to reduce and minimize, but that we can never completely eliminate. Modern nursing evolved from the Crimean War, where our most famous predecessor, Florence Nightingale, went from patient to patient, with comfort and caring as her primary tools and very little in the way of cure. We have a lot more tools now and a lot more technology. Nurses are experts at what they do. That often includes proficiency in equipment, in-depth knowledge of medications and treatments, and attention to pathophysiology and disease processes. These things are ever-changing and ever-evolving. That is, as it should be, healthcare practice should shift with evolving evidence. The emergence of a new virus like COVID-19 is a reminder that the foundational tools of nursing don't ever really change. As nurses, our fundamental responsibility is to provide care and comfort, even when there is no cure available. Hope, not for the outcome, but that we are not alone, that we are cared for. Nurses are the embodiment of hope. This is particularly true in dark times when we are sick and vulnerable. That light of hope can carry us through. At that moment, at this moment, in the middle of a global pandemic, the world is in desperate need of hope. Normally, we would all be sitting together in a lovely auditorium, watching our nursing graduates walk across the stage and receive their nursing pins. Those pins are a long tradition and are unique to each school, signifying achievement and marking each student as a graduate nurse. No longer our students, but our peers. Instead, we're all at home, watching at a distance, as so many things are right now. To our students, today you are graduating and soon you will sit for the NCLEX and become registered nurses. And when you get out there in your first nursing job, you will be overwhelmed by how much you don't know. I would like to suggest to you that this is not a weakness. It is in fact a superpower. When we don't know, we look at things more carefully, consider things more fully, and you'll quickly find that in nursing, as in life, things often don't go according to plan. Nurses are one of the most trusted professionals by the general public. 
It is because we are superheroes. We don't have super healing powers or super emotional resilience, not any more than anyone else. What we do have is the superpower of observation, the superpower of asking questions, the superpower of critical thinking, and the superpower of radical compassion. So cherish what you don't know. Keep it close to your heart. Because in nursing as in life, it is when we start thinking that we know that we get into trouble. Once we know, we stop critically observing, stop asking questions, stop listening. This isn't the end of your education. This is just the first rung on a very tall ladder that you will climb for years to come. The ladder of knowledge in nursing never ends. When you first started this program, I said that we would teach you the skills you needed to become nurses. I trust we have done that. But I also said that becoming a nurse would fundamentally change who you are. We're not just nurses at work. Nursing is not just a career. Being a nurse is part of who you are. There's much work to be done and we're in desperate need of hope and light. Your care will be a gift to our community and the world. Thank you so much. First, I would like to thank all of our faculty, all of our nursing faculty for their contribution to the program, for their tireless work with these students. We have an amazing, amazing faculty group. So thank you so much. And of course, our nursing program staff, without whom we would be unable to run our program, despite our best efforts. Thank you all so much for the work that you do. And now I would like to introduce Tom Carson, our faculty speaker. So thanks for asking me to share some thoughts for you, with you at your graduation. It is my honor and privilege to do so. First off, congratulations to each of you for reaching this milestone in your nursing career. Soon you will be among the ranks of registered nurses. I know that your effort you have put in to be able, well, it used to be able to sit up and set a mile a hall, but now what effort you have put in to attend a Zoom meeting. So let's just practice this little Zoom feature. Some of us may not be able to see it. If everyone can press the little hands clapping and applause button on Zoom, See, we can do that several times and not be disruptive. You've put in long hours and worked really hard to be here. Each of you made a commitment and sacrifice to pursue this dream. Each of you had a choice between studying and going to Zoom meetings and previously, quote unquote, real classes. Remember those? And other pursuits. You consistently over time chose the nursing profession as your priority. It has not always been easy. In fact, it has been downright challenging, and I imagine has brought tears and a question to that commitment in one way or another to each of you. And yet, here we are in the middle of a pandemic. You are to be commended for your tenacity and resilience. Also, congratulations to all of your family and friends who supported you on this endeavor. You too share in some of the excitement of seeing your graduate here today. You've encouraged them along this path and in many cases freed up space for them to study, attend Zoom meetings, or just have some quiet time. Students, please applaud your significant others. Thank you also to the nursing faculty, as Julie alluded to earlier, and the dedicated staff at BTC for addressing all the unique, shall I say, opportunities that the pandemic has brought. We learn new definitions of words such as heavy lift and pivot. Through it all, each of them has been committed to student success and your progress towards graduation. Their commitment has never wavered from that goal. Applause. In thinking about what to say today, I felt it was important to at least share some thoughts on the pandemic. You are a unique group of students as you applied for nursing school by jogging across our campus, and I seriously doubt anybody was practicing social distancing at that time, nor were we maybe familiar with that term. Now you're completing nursing school during a pandemic and entering the nursing profession during the same pandemic with public vaccination just starting. This vaccination program will require nurses many of you for successful implementation. So I'd like to share a couple reflections, three actually. How many times has faculty asked you to reflect on your experience and your learning? 
Well, I'm going to provide you with three more opportunities to reflect. These ones, however, do not require you to upload a document to Canvas in any APA format. You get to listen. Reflection number one, a historical reflection. Quote, and then I will unquote at the end, measures to limit contact between humans to curb the spread of infectious disease have been used since the Middle Ages and similar restrictions were implemented during the Spanish flu. It was mostly up to the local authorities to decide which measures to take with the result that responses varied widely between cities, areas, and countries. Measures included banning large public gatherings, and closing down schools, cinemas, saloons, dance halls, and streetcars. In some cities, the public were also encouraged to stay at home and affected individuals were generally placed under quarantine. Furthermore, the public was educated to avoid crowds, to use handkerchiefs to cover their nose and mouth when coughing or sneezing, and to practice good hand hygiene by hand washing. Some authorities also encouraged increasing natural resistance to the disease through sufficient rest, fresh air, and good nourishment. San Francisco passed an ordinance by which everyone had to wear a gauze mask when venturing outside, and this apparently led to a rapid decline in the number of cases. Members of the public varied in their reactions to stringent measures which impacted their daily lives. Some accepted the restrictions, others called for stricter measures, and then there were also those who protested against what they saw as unnecessary and unfair limitations. Some public health authorities were also slow to respond. For example, when the Spanish flu had taken a firm hold and had claimed a number of lives in the city, the director of public health and charities in Philadelphia insisted there was nothing to worry about and a mass Liberty Bond parade went ahead. Tens of thousands of people flocked to the streets and a spike in cases of Spanish flu was seen within days. Philadelphia was one of the hardest hit cities in the US. Overall, analysis of records show that death rates were lower, where various measures were implemented quickly and sustained over time." Unquote. Those excerpt, excerpts are from an article entitled, Nursing During the Deadliest Influenza Pandemic of 1918 by Frida Patton. Reflection number two, graduation, also historical. Quote unquote, during the pandemic, the epidemic, during the epidemic, the freshman class of 30 students stood by to give assistance or relief to the first line wherever it was asked. Owing to the loss of time from classwork during these weeks, it seemed advisable and indeed necessary to extend the college session and defer commencement day until June 18. Those excerpts, excerpts were from Martha Tracy, who was the Dean of Women's Medical College, and graduation had been delayed so students could join the efforts as, in today's terms, frontline essential workers. Number three, and my last reflection, is a reminder as each of you accepts your first employment opportunities of many, most likely, as an RN, to fully embrace and embody the American Nurses Association Code of Ethics for Nurses, which reads as follows. Please substitute your name for nurse. Number one, there's nine. Number one, the nurse practices with compassion and respect for the inherent dignity, worth, and unique attributes of every person. Number two, the nurse's primary commitment is to the patient, whether as an individual, family, group, community, or population. Number three, the nurse promotes, advocates for, and protects the rights, health, and safety of the patient. Number four, the nurse has authority, accountability, and responsibility for nursing practice, makes decisions, and takes action consistent with the obligation to provide optimal patient care. Number five, the nurse owes the same duties to self as to others, including the responsibility to promote health and safety, preserve wholeness of character and integrity, 
maintain competence, and continue personal and professional growth. Number six, the nurse through individual and collective effort establishes, maintains, and improves the ethical environment of the work setting and conditions of employment that are conducive to safe, quality healthcare. Number seven, the nurse in all roles and settings advances the profession through research and scholarly inquiry, professional standards development, and the generation of both nursing and health policy. Number eight, the nurse collaborates with other health professionals and the public to protect human rights, promote health diplomacy, and reduce health disparities. Number nine, the profession of nursing collectively through its professional organizations must articulate nursing values, maintain the integrity of their profession, and integrate, integrate profession, principles of social justice into nursing and health policy. Finally, in closing, congratulations to each of you on your individual and collective accomplishments. We look forward to seeing what things each one of you will accomplish. May FaceTime and Zoom allow you to celebrate a healthy and joyful 2020 holiday season with you and your family and others. Thank you for allowing me a few minutes of your time and I would like to now introduce the student speaker for the graduating class of December 2020, Tanya. Thank you, Tom. Well, I'm going to take a deep breath. Welcome. I would like to begin by thanking all of you for taking the time to join us in celebrating one of the most important achievements of our lives. Whether you realize it or not, this day would not be possible without each and every one of you. On behalf of the 1220 BTC nursing cohort, I would first like to acknowledge the friends and family that have lived out the past two years alongside us. This day of celebration belongs not only to us, but to you. You have remained unwavering in your love and support. You have encouraged us through long days, weeks, and months, many of which brought a mixture of doubt, tears, and at times, pure defeat. Through it all, you remained our biggest allies, believing in us when we did not have the strength to believe in ourselves. The sacrifices you demonstrated and grace you have shown will forever be remembered and appreciated. Words are simply not enough to express our gratitude. Next, I would like to recognize those here today that are responsible with bringing us over the academic threshold of becoming registered nurses. The staff and faculty at BTC nursing program, we commend you. You worked diligently in your efforts to produce the very best caliber nurses to offer humankind. You run a rigorous program setting the high standards necessary for developing confidence and professional excellence. Your dedication to the success of your nursing students was imperative in getting, to, getting us to where we are today. In the past nine months, you have risen to the challenge of continuing a program throughout the COVID-19 pandemic. You have spent countless hours behind the scenes modifying and restructuring our learning platforms and clinical assignments. You looked ahead and committed to our timely completion of the, the program anticipating that we would be ready and available to assist our burdened healthcare system in a time of desperate need. You've shown great fortitude in your efforts, and if it were not for your dedication to our success, we would not be here today. We thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Finally, to my nursing classmates, being accepted into nursing school is known to be a difficult feat. However, none of us realized that on July 25th, 2019, it would not be our academic accolades that won us a seat in the BTC nursing program, but rather our ability to strategize the best way to navigate the walls between the H and HECT building. Either way, that day in July was just a preview of the anxiety, stress, and panic we would soon become familiar with as nursing students. When I think of our cohort and all that we have endured together, one word stands out in my mind, grit. Psychologist Angela Duckworth describes grit as a personality trait possessed by individuals who demonstrate passion and perseverance toward a goal despite being confronted by significant obstacles and distractions. In our first quarter, we encountered, encountered those obstacles and distractions head on. We had to make hard decisions. We sacrificed. We battled within ourselves. There were tears. 
We questioned if we were really up for this. We experienced failures and successes. Then we faced what they had warned us about in the beginning. Not everyone would move forward with us. Our, gr our group dwindled and we felt vulnerable. The quarters came and went and we faced more adversity and loss along the way. Despite the challenges, we grew stronger and more resilient. We developed the vital attributes that excellent nurses must possess. We demonstrated caring for one another, empathy by showing compassion and concern when we were struggling. Two years ago, we were complete strangers, but we climbed some of the hardest mountains together. We bonded in ways that only those who go through an experience like this will understand. Today, we stand at the top of the mountain together, the mighty 14. We look behind us at the peaks and valleys we have traversed. We remember the parts on the trail where we wanted to quit. We look, <coughs> sorry, we look down on the sections when we slipped and nearly fell. And we remember the good times, the level ground that only lasted until the next test where we could enjoy the experience. We are now at the top and the view from here is exciting. New opportunities abound. Although we are small in comparison to the mountains we have faced together, we know we can do hard things. Hold on to your aspirations to, to do good in the world and make a difference and may your dreams sustain you in the years to come. To the 1220 cohort, it's been a pleasure. Thank you for the memories. And in the famous words of Joan Human, carry forth. All right, thank you so much, Tanya. Now we're gonna move on to the pinning section. Normally we would be all together and the nurses would each get their individual pin as they walked across the stage. Um, as it is today, we're gonna have our senior instructor who teaches the sixth quarter, Joan Human, is gonna go through and congratulate each of the graduates. I'll let you take it away, Joan. So, yes. Um, it, my name is Joan Human. It's been my great pleasure and honor to work with these wonderful program graduates during their last quarter of the nursing school. We are now going to move forward and show their pictures and I will read their biographies as we move along. Our first program graduate is Brittany Ancona. Brittany reports the following. I have chosen a career in nursing because I'm compassionate about helping others and have always had a strong interest in medicine and the human body. My career goal moving forward is to become a nurse in cardiology, a field I have always been very passionate about. I first and foremost want to thank my fiance, Patrick, who has helped me through every step of the way. I wouldn't be here without your love, encouragement, and patience. I would also like to say a special thank you to my parents, siblings, classmates, and my close and dear friends. Thank you for believing me and for all your love and support throughout my education and my graduation. Congratulations, Brittany. Our next graduate is Marta Carpenter. Marta reports the following. I'm becoming a nurse because I'm a compassionate person who cares about others. And I would like to make a positive impact in the, on the community. I hope to find a job in Bellingham in community health nursing, mental health, or hospice care. This experience has been a journey of ups and downs, but it has been so worth it. I would like to thank my amazing partner, Sean, my beautiful daughter, Haley, my brothers and sisters, and my supportive parents, Dean and Christy. I would not be here without their love, support, listening ears, and kind words of encouragement. Thank you so, so much. I will be forever grateful. We did it! Congratulations, Marta. Our next program graduate is Dakota Coleman. Dakota reports the following. I have always had a strong desire to work in the medical field. When you step into a hospital, you will find people who are having the worst day of their life, the first day of their life, or the last day of their life. The idea that I could make a difference in an individual's life has emphasized the importance of my profession and further drives me to ensure I am doing my utmost to serve my community. As I look to my immediate future, I am honored and grateful to accept a position as an RN at St. Joseph Hospital. 
After obtaining my Bachelor of Science in Nursing degree, I intend to move towards my goal of becoming a nurse practitioner. While going through the nursing program, a stable and consistent support system has been of vital to my access. I would like to thank my husband, Nathan, for his continuous love, comfort, and always being the best companion for late night coffee trips. I would like to thank my mom and dad and the support and encouragement they provided, as well as the motivation to keep going. As my peers and I go our separate ways, I wish each one of my classmates a successful, rewarding journey, and I would like to leave them with this quote from Minor Myers Jr. Go into the world and do well, but more importantly, go into the world and do good. Congratulations, Dakota. Emily DeCoria is our next program graduate. Emily chose a career in nursing to make a difference in people's lives through compassionate care. She completed her preceptorship on the progressive care unit and plans to pursue a career working as a critical care nurse. Emily would like to thank her husband, HB, for being supportive and understanding on all those long study days and night shift clinicals. Special thanks to her sisters, Hannah and Alana, and to her mom for all the last minute edits and supports. She would also like to thank the rest of her family and friends for all their support and encouragement during the last two years. Last but not least, none of this would have been possible without the unwavering support of her dad. An extra special thanks to him for all the pep talks and phrases like cooperate to graduate that helped her to stay focused and achieve this goal. Thank you. Congratulations, Emily. Tanya Heredia. Tanya says, also our class speaker, I have become a nurse because I have a passion for taking care of others. I am so blessed to have a career that is also a calling. My future plans include joining the acute care team at, at Peace Health and continuing to pursue my MSN in nursing management and leadership. Special thanks to my husband, Misael, for his constant support during this journey. I could not have done it without you. Thanks also to my son, Isaiah, and daughter, Sienna, for all their love and encouragement. Congratulations, Tanya. Our next graduate is program Chris Hunter, who reports, in becoming a nurse, I know that I am committed to bringing a light to the people I work with as best I can. I have some thanks to give to some awesome people. I would like to thank Shane Wegg, who fulfilled my greatest hope. When I started school, all I wanted was to have instructors that had a passion for teaching and a caring for people, not only patients, but students. Shane exceeded my expectations and helped me get over my first hump of questioning whether I had made the right decision to enter nursing school. To maintain my spirit, this relationship was critical in keeping me going. Working with her at Christian, caring for clients with her will always stick with me. She also treated me with respect as a peer of sorts because she understood that I brought my own life experiences to this process. Thank you very much, Shane. I would also like to thank my senior staff, including Diana Davidson, Tom Carson, Kate Scott, and Mary Curran. You are all extremely adept at meeting me where I was, and I wish I could have carried you on my shoulder through preceptorship as my angels and devils. I would also like to thank the program staff and administration, Julie, Rika, Jennifer, and Shelby. You helped me get through a lot of quirky scenarios and provided great support and feedback as only such a diverse group of talented humans could. Thanks one and all. Congratulations, Chris. Andrea Iverson is our next program graduate and she reports that, Andrea has always had a passion for caring for others. She grew up volunteering at an assisted living home. She spent time participating in crafts and enjoying the holidays with residents. Her desire to become a nurse expanded when she became a CNA in the emergency room and watched the nurses care for a wide range of patients. To her, nursing is more than just a profession. It's a heartfelt dedication to helping others. 
Andrea has accepted a job at St. Joe's and will start soon after graduation. She is excited to be working in the hospital atmosphere and hopes to eventually work in the emergency room or on a cardiac floor. Andrea would like to give a special thanks to her boyfriend, mom, and sister, who all supported her throughout her school. Congratulations, Andrea. And Lauren Johnson is our next graduate. And Lauren says, with a heartfelt, thank you to the BTC Nursing Program faculty for making it possible for us to graduate and become nurses. You're welcome, Lauren, and thank you very much. Congratulations. Sophia Colbert is our next program graduate. Becoming a nurse for Sophia has always been something she wanted to be since she was a young child when she got sick and was on the other end of the scope. It solidified her decision and she knew she wanted to help others and give back to the community. Sophia's goal is to move forward working at a dermatology clinic or an outpatient surgery center while her children are still young. She wants to say special thanks to her family, especially her sisters, Nadia and Anna, her friends, and most of all, her husband, Brandon, and children, Andrew and Carson. Big thanks for being there during those late night editing, long emotional rants and supporting me in every way. I could not have done this without you guys. Congratulations, Sophia. Our next graduate is Mr. Fabio Mahone. Fabio reports the following. I've been working as a CNA for seven years and it's time to take the next step. I really enjoy working with people and being part of a team helping to get someone through a tough medical experience is the most rewarding job. I plan on working in critical care and I hope to be working in one of the hospitals down in Seattle. I'd like to thank my family, friends, and girlfriend for helping me stay sane through these last two years. And of course, the wonderful staff that has been supportive and done an exceptional job getting nursing students through the program during these crazy times. They have been role models that we will never forget as we progress throughout our nursing careers. Congratulations, Fabio. Next, we have Ms. Andrea Manny. Andrea reports, my passion for science and biology led me towards healthcare. I wanted to do something that makes a difference in people's lives. Nursing is not just a job for me, it's a calling. My dream is to work in labor and delivery and become an obstetric nurse. I would like to thank my husband, Robbie, for his huge support and encouragement. I couldn't do this without him. My daughter, Angel, for showing her patience and love for me while I was engaged in my books. My parents for making me who I am today. All my classmates for their help and support throughout this journey. Most of all, I would like to thank all my instructors and faculty at BTC that has made this possible for me. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for your support and hard work. Thank you once again. Congratulations, Andrea. Our next graduate is Ms. Sadie Rabiner Justice. My name is Sadie and I like people, places, and things. I have never known what career path I was going to choose. I just knew I wanted something fast-placed, something to challenge the little peanut that rolls around in my head, and something meaningful where I had the opportunity to make an impact on another person's life. Nursing seems to be all of those things. I am excited to be starting my nursing career at St. Joseph Hospital in Bellingham. I owe a very special thank you to my mom and dad, Tim and Linda. You are the most kind, patient, and caring par parents a girl could ask for. Thank you for all your extra love and support during these past two years. I know I can always count on you two for a good laugh. Jeff, thank you for being my best friend and partner. I could not have made it this far without you. You are always encouraging me and pushing me to be the best I can be. I appreciate you more than you know. And to top it off, you have a really good nod down for when I talk in medical terms. I am so thankful for all the amazing friends I have made in this program. I can't believe we did it. Congratulations, Sadie. And our next graduate is Ms. Brenda Viegas. 
The human mind has been my passion since I can remember. Mental health was the initial and most important reason for my decision to pursue nursing. I will be seeking opportunities in this specialty field with a great hope that I make a difference in the lives of those who are struggling to cope and manage a mental health crisis or condition, excuse me, condition. A very special thanks to my mother who has offered her unconditional support day or night. Jeremy, to say you have been my rock would be an understatement. Sadie and Dakota, I could not have done this without you two. We have struggled together and achieved together. I simply cannot put into words how invaluable you all are to me. Congratulations, Brenda. And our final program graduate tonight, a special thanks out to Mr. Alex Watson Busson. I became a nurse to assist people in getting well from a disease that ails them. There is no better feeling than knowing you made a difference in that person's life. I would eventually like to take my care to the ICU, helping those that can be in a critical situation while educating myself on the best possible care to give my patients for their situation. I would like to thank first my wife and kids for supporting me through these two years and helping me practice my skills on them. <laughs> I would also like to thank all faculty because they all felt like they believed in me and never had a doubt that I would become a great nurse. Congratulations, Alex. And that is the end of that report. Hi, I'm Kimberly Perry, the president of Bellingham Technical College. Congratulations to the graduating class of BTC's nursing program. Students, please rise and grab your tassels, which should be on your right side. Now wait till I'm finished. Then I'll tell you when to move your tassel from the right to the left, which signifies that you are a graduate. Students, I have the honor as president of Bellingham Technical College under the authority vested in me by the State Board for Community and Technical Colleges and the Board of Trustees of Bellingham Technical College to confer upon each of you an Associate in Nursing Direct Transfer Agreement major related program. You are now officially graduated and move your tassels from the right to the left. Congratulations graduates.